Dude, that thing is sick! This is our new custom drive shaft. What we did is we took the back half of the drive shaft and mated it with the front joint that goes into, what do you call the back of the transmission? It's called something. This slides into? Oh, it was a slip yoke. We took the slip yoke off of the uh, other drive shaft and made it into this one. So this is our new custom drive shaft. Now, we know, yes, you can get a custom drive shaft made for like 250 bucks. That's not very bad. Uh, but what we're gonna try to do is just use the one we already have See where it puts our engine. See if it's a place that the engine would be happy to live and uh, roll with it if it works. There's a few reasons why. One, we think it'd be really cool to be able to use a stock GM drive shaft. Uh, another reason is it's gonna push our engine pretty far back, which hopefully will translate into better handling. We'll take this big, massive weight of an engine and put it behind the front wheels, which should make the truck handle pretty well. Uh, so what we're gonna do next is go ahead and mount this into the car and just see where it makes us place the engine. If it's in a good spot, we're going to keep moving. resting place of our engine. This is kind of like our ideal world spot. Now, we understand that it is very far back. This is actually going to go underneath our windshield, and I think, what, six of the eight cylinders will basically be in the cab? Eight. Uh, maybe eight of the eight are going to be in the cab as of now, uh, which is crazy, and we understand that. The cool part about this setup is that we're already connected with a drive shaft. Our drive shaft is in. This, is, this could potentially run the car if we could get it all worked out. So now we just gotta make sure all the body work's gonna fit around it. If it doesn't work, I guess we'll move to plan B, which was our original plan, so, you know, whatever. But this plan is so much cooler. All right, let's cut some stuff. Like that. Ish. Yeah, let's do it. We've got to make some room for this big V8. This car was not meant to have an engine this size, nor was it meant to have a transmission this size. So that means cutting out most of the firewall and a large portion of trans tunnel and just rebuilding our own later on down the road. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> I mean, maybe I'm just tired, but this looks hilarious. I mean, we still can come back a few inches. So what? But I'm, like, you're gonna pop the hood and just see an air filter. <laughs> got plenty of room for an air filter. <laughs> I'm still not against what we're doing here. It just looks yeah, I think ridiculous. we're gonna end up losing the dash and that middle. Oh yeah, right now. Yeah. You're, you're not. Oh, oh my goodness, that was not nerve wracking at all. I'm totally calm here. No. This is absurd. All right, we just need to take a second. <laughs> this is, is this actually a good idea? All right, so for you guys watching at home, um, yes, this does look ridiculous. Let us know in the comments what you think about this. Do you think it's a great idea? Do you think it's a terrible idea? Do you think it's hilarious that a V8 sticks out? Less than our four-cylinder L20 did. It just looks insane. So my only thoughts are like, like what if we if we ever have to remove the intake manifold? You gotta what pull the cab off? But even if you did, it's four bolts. So if we build around that idea, right, of making the cab easy to remove, right, then it's not that big of a deal. It's four bolts. So if we make it so that everything, all our fuel line, air line. We need to strip this cab down completely so that it's down to bare metal and then reinforce it. Chase is just welding in some thin wall tubing and an X pattern. That's going to keep our uh, cab from flexing when we cut out big chunks of the floor. 